In this video, you'll learn how to kickstart your journey as a sales cloud administrator. We'll provide you with all the essential knowledge you need to get started and succeed in this role. Before we dive in, let's outline our learning objectives for today. We'll explore core objects and their relation to the sales process, then walk through setup best practices. And lastly, understand other considerations like duplication management and automation considerations. As a sales cloud administrator, you play a vital role in streamlining the sales process within your organization. The typical sales process includes these stages. Lead generation, identifying potential customers. Qualification, evaluating leads to determine their potential. Opportunity management, converting qualified leads into sales opportunities. Closing the deal, nurturing opportunities to completion. Account management, managing existing customers and ensuring satisfaction. Salesforce is here to support you at every stage of this process, making your job more efficient and effective. Now, let's talk about the core objects you'll work with in Sales Cloud. Leads, potential customers or individuals showing interest in your product or service. Accounts, these are the companies or organizations you do business with. Contacts, individuals associated with these accounts. Opportunities, Represent potential or ongoing deals with your accounts. Activities. Detailed information such as call logs, calendar events, and emails associated with other core objects. Products. Your offerings. Price books. Lists of products with their prices. These core objects are the building blocks of your Salesforce setup. In Sales Cloud, opportunities go through various stages, from initial contact to closure. Salesforce comes configured with a standard set of statuses. These can and should be customized to match your specific sales process as this helps significantly with adoption. Let's move on to our first demo. Now let's take a look at a few configurations that you may want to make as an admin. As we do an org audit, we find that there are too many industries listed in our industries picklist field. So let's start by cleaning up and leaving only what we need. From the opportunity page, we'll select setup then Edit Object. This takes us to the Object Manager page for the Opportunity Object. From here, we can apply changes as we see fit. For example, we can look up the industry field that we were just working with, and I can see the pick list values that are included. We can now edit, delete, and deactivate any of the industries that we do not want to include in the dropdown anymore. Note that we always recommend testing any changes that you make to your org in a sandbox before pushing them to production. That way you can ensure that the changes are exactly what you're looking for and don't make any mistakes in a live org. Now let's make an additional edit to our opportunity page. We'll navigate to fields and relationships from the left-hand menu. If we wanted to create a brand new field, we could do that by clicking new. But instead, let's create a dependency between two fields. Let's say we'd like to keep track of our competitors and every time we lose a deal, we'll want our sales reps to note who we lost the deal to. We already have the competitor field created, so let's go ahead and find it. There it is. In order to create the dependency between two fields, we'll select Field Dependencies. Then we'll click on New. We'll look for Reason Lost as our controlling field and Winning Competitor as the dependent field. Then we'll click Continue. Next, we'll highlight the values that we want to include in our dependent pick list and select Include Values. The fields shown in yellow are included. From here, we can click on Preview, and this will show you an example of what your sales reps will see when they use this field. Once they make a selection under the Reason Lost field, they will also be able to choose to which competitor we lost to. This will help give insights for our leadership team. You're likely familiar with how your sales reps use the opportunity object and the activities that they need on a daily basis. If you do not see the buttons to log a call, an email, or an event, you'll want to ensure that those buttons are added on the page layout for easy access. From the Opportunity object, let's click Settings, then navigate to Edit object. Under Page Layouts, we'll select the standard Opportunity page layout, then we'll find Mobile and Lightning Actions. This is where you'll see which buttons are on the page layout. If you see some that aren't there, take a moment to click and drag them to where you want them on the page layout. We have everything we need for the moment, so we can click Save. 
Another feature that is commonly used by sales reps is share activities. With share activities, users can relate up to 50 contacts, but only one lead to an event or a task, which is helpful for reporting purposes. To do this, we're going to stay here on setup and we'll search for activity settings and select it. We can see the select the checkbox at the bottom. Allow users to relate multiple contacts to events and tasks. We already have this feature enabled in this org, so we are all set. Note that once you've enabled, you'll need to contact our support team to disable. Once you've made any necessary changes, you can click Submit. Note that after enabling shared activities, it can take up to 48 hours for activities to be ready. During this process, sales reps can continue working with events and tasks. Now, let's take a look at some of the configuration steps you'll take as an admin. We're starting off on the home page, which is highly customizable. From the home page, we'll select Edit this page to make modifications. By dragging and dropping, we can add additional components that we know our sales reps use frequently to help reduce the number of clicks required to get the information they need. We'll include a dashboard component, and on the right-hand side, we can select which dashboard we want to display. Once we have the component we want, we can save and then click Activate. We can assign this page view at different levels. We can set it as the org default, or as the app default for any app and profile. Let's choose org default, and once we're done, we can click Save Now. We can go back and see our brand new modified homepage. Now let's pivot to Opportunity Contact Roles. Opportunity contact roles let your sales team know who to contact for each deal. When you edit or add new contact roles, you can indicate which role they play within their organization. To ensure that this functionality is available to your users, you as the admin will need to add the related list to the page layout for opportunities. We'll again navigate to Setup, then we'll click on Edit Object, which will take us to the Object Manager for the Opportunity Object. And from there, we'll click on Page Layouts. Click on the Opportunity page layout and click on Related Lists. We're looking to make sure that the Contact Roles Related list has been included in your page layout. Once we know it's there, we can save and your Contact Roles Related list should appear on your Opportunities page layout. One of our customer favorite features is Path Confetti, which comes down when an opportunity is marked as Closed 1. Let's see it in action once we move the opportunity to the closed stage and we select that it has been won, confetti comes down the screen. To make this happen in your org, we'll need to enable celebrations in the sales path. If you're unfamiliar with the path feature, this is essentially a visual representation of your opportunity process. It can be a sales process or a different kind of process that is followed regularly in your organization. Let's get back to Confetti, we'll navigate to Setup, then search for Path Settings and select it. Then we can select Edit on the Opportunity Sales Path. This is the path that we just saw. Click on Next. And, while we're in Edit Mode, you can take the opportunity to review and update any descriptions or text that you see along the way. Once we get to our final edit page, we can enable celebrations and select or change the stage where the confetti should show up as well as the frequency. For now, we'll select Always, so it will happen every time. Let's discuss some setup best practices to make your life as a sales cloud administrator easier. Custom fields. Consider adding custom fields to capture specific information relevant to your industry. Record types. Create different record types if you deal with different types of accounts. Page layouts. Adjust page layouts to display the most relevant information for your users. List views are a great way to sort, prioritize, and analyze the records that are most important to you for a particular object. Quick actions let your users quickly do tasks such as create records, log calls, send emails, and more. A well-organized setup can significantly improve your effectiveness as an administrator. I'd like to take a few minutes to review some of the key administrator functions that are typically done with any new implementation of Salesforce that also continue on throughout an implementation lifecycle. Those include adding a user, restricting login access, resetting a password, and using permission sets outside of standard profiles. I'd like to take a few minutes to review some of the key administrator functions that are typically done with any new implementation of Salesforce that also continue on throughout an implementation lifecycle. Those include adding a user, restricting login access, 
resetting a password, and using permission sets outside of standard profiles. Note that depending on the size of your organization or your new hire onboarding process, you may choose to add users one at a time. The maximum number of users you can add is determined by your Salesforce solution. Let's start by setting up a new user. Starting in Setup, we'll search for users in the Quick Find box and select it. Then we'll click on the New User button. We can enter first name, last name, and the email address. We'll also provide a unique username in the form of email address. By default, the username is the same as the email address. Next, we'll select a role for our user. We'll select Project Manager here. Then we'll select our user license. The user license determines which profiles are available for the user. Next, we'll select the profile which specifies the user's minimum permissions and access setting. Let's select Standard User. If your organization has approvals enabled, you can also set the user's approver settings, such as Delegated Approval Manager, Preference for Receiving Approval Request Limits. We'll check Generate New Password and Notify User immediately to have the user's login name and a temporary password emailed to the new user and then click on Save. In some cases, you may need to grant a bit more access than what your standard user profile has. In our example, we need to allow sales users to be able to convert leads. Since this isn't a part of the standard user profile, the best approach here is to create a permission set that we can assign to specific sales users to have this additional level of access. Let's dive in to create a quick permission set so you can see how easily this can be accomplished. Under Setup, enter permission sets and then select it. We'll click on the new button and give our permission set a name. We can name this one Lead Access. Note that you can assign this permission set at the license level. For our example, let's select Salesforce and then click on Save. After giving the necessary access in the permission set, we may want to assign it to individual users. Click Manage Assignment, then Add Assignment. Select the user to whom you want to assign the permission set and then click on Next and Assign. As an administrator, you can reset a user's password for better protection or to give access back to a user if they get locked out. From Setup, enter users in the Quick Find box and select it. Check the checkbox next to the username. Optionally, to change the password for all currently displayed users, check the box in the column header to select All Rows. Then click Reset Password. Once this is done, the user will receive an email that contains a link and instructions to reset the password. Another option you have as an administrator is restricting the hours during which a user can log in, as well as the range of IP addresses from which they can log in and access Salesforce. From Setup, let's search for Profiles, then click on Profiles, and then we can find the specific profile for which we want to restrict login access. In this case, let's select the standard user profile. In the Profile Overview page, we'll scroll down to Login Hours and click Edit. Set the days and hours when users with this profile can log into the org. For Monday, we'll select 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. To let users log in at any time, click Clear All Times. To prohibit users from logging in on a specific day, we can set start time to 12 a.m. and end time to end of day. For example, we don't want our users logging on on Wednesday. We'll select 12 a.m. start time and end time is 12 a.m. Now let's discuss some other considerations. The first is duplicate records. Resolving and preventing duplicates is important to increase user confidence in your data. Standard duplicate management rules are included, but these can be customized to meet your business needs. Each standard duplicate rule includes a standard matching rule that determines how records are identified as duplicates. The standard rules are included for accounts, person accounts, contacts, and leads. These rules define what happens when a user views a duplicated record or starts to create a record that duplicates one of those items. For more information, see our expert coaching session on duplicate management. Lastly, we can't go without talking about Salesforce Automation Suite. It's a game changer in Sales Cloud. It streamlines processes, reduces manual work, and ensures consistency. Here are some key automation tools. Flow, build more complex automation sequences. With flows, you can also create scheduled flows, which allows you to automate repetitive tasks on a schedule. Approval processes, streamline approval requests. 
By leveraging these tools, you can automate tasks, improve efficiency, and enhance the user experience. See our expert coaching session on automation for more details. To recap, in this screencast, we've covered the following. The fundamental concepts of sales cloud administration. Set up best practices for a well-organized Salesforce instance. Handling duplicate management for data integrity. The power of automation tools in sales cloud. For more information, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching and welcome to the exciting world of sales cloud administration.